Hey guys, good morning. I'm at the Shinkansen station, ready to leave Shizuoka. Just went to a bakery and got some really good stuff. These are salt ones. These are some of my favorite bakery items here in Japan. Wow, these are so buttery. This is absolutely amazing. I think this might just be the best egg sandwich I've ever had in Japan. It's so good. So you sit down because you're outside. There's a blanket and heater underneath the table so you can keep your legs warm. And then there is a little coat you can put on to stay nice and warm and cozy, even though it's nice and nippy outside. So this place is called Tonkusen, and it's a beef hot pot place. So the name of this dish is Gyo Nabe. Nabe is hot pot, gyo of course beef. I've actually never tried anything like this before, so can't wait. To start off, pureed wild yam and soybean soup. Mmm. Wow. If you like yam, this is the soup for you. It's so interesting. I mean, it's thick, it's very rich and creamy. It's got that sticky texture of the yam. At the same time, you taste the soybeans. First course has arrived and it is beautiful. Four dishes, three of them served on these beautiful stones. One served on glass shaped like a, like a shot glass. And you notice these chopsticks right here, it's very sharp. So this way you can gain a lot of precision when grabbing your food. Itadakimasu. So on this tray, there's beef shigurini, which is a marinated beef and soy sauce. Mm. Love the mix of lean and fat in this beef. I think a little bit of onions in here as well. The marinade is a little sweet, a lot of umami. Mm. There's wild yam and vegetable pickles. Mm. These two dishes go so well together. One is rich and flavorful. One is so light and vinegary. And on this stone here, there's cream cheese pickled in Saikuyo's miso. Put a little miso on that. Oh wow. That is like the ultimate food combo. Cream cheese and miso. That miso is pretty much a flavor bomb. I think there's some meat in the miso too. That with that rich cream cheese, amazing. And then a Castella cake. Basically it's a tamago with needle fish inside. Sweet, light, you can definitely taste the fish in that. Next you get a steamed egg with beef tendon. Mmm, there's a little potatoes in here as well. They kind of taste like really fancy home fries. The egg is very custardy and creamy. It's very rich, very beefy flavor. Oh, this is absolutely splendid. So this thing looks very much like a sukiyaki. It's not a sukiyaki because sukiyaki, the meat is grilled before the sauce, the kare is added. And here, the meat is cooked directly in the kare. What they do is they give you 
an egg on top of a uh, yam that they keep for three years. And you mix that together, and then you put the egg five wagyu inside. That's absolutely tremendous. And they brought over a special rice to eat with the beef. This rice has lily bulb and beef tendon. Look at that. And also more items have been added to my bowl. Some lettuce, scallions, tofu. The meat dipped into the egg and the yam. It's supposed to cool the meat down a little bit. And of course, it adds an additional layer of creamy, rich flavor. Oh, this rice is so good. There's a lot of beefy flavor from the rice. And you add that melts in your mouth, a fine Wagyu, which is already rich and buttery with the egg, with the yam. Basically made it a Elon Musk. So, so rich. And the vegetables are really needed to kind of balance out the fattiness and the richness of the meat. Mm. There's also konjac and gluten as well. So you're getting a wide variety of vegetables and ingredients and meat. And it's just made all that much better by the view in front of you. Just hearing that rushing creak and, and be able to enjoy this masterful meal. This is just the ultimate dining experience. And look at this, a giant piece of gluten. Looks like a massive pork belly. That soaked in all that delicious cotter. It basically just became a sweet umami sponge. Oh, wow, after you can eat, my whole body is heating up. And they brought over some hojicha, which feels so good in my mouth because it basically wash away and neutralizes all the fat and all the sweetnesses in my mouth. That's just a perfect drink at the end. Dessert is beautiful. A tangerine pina cotta with a little branch of sakura sitting next to it. Mmm. This is great. So the inside of the panna cotta, they basically put sections of sweet tangerine in here. It's juicy, it's sweet, so creamy and delicious. Then a little cup of white bean custard. This thing is delicious, like light and creamy. This whole meal is absolutely magnificent. Like I say, you're sitting here, you're listening to that river right in front of you. There's just something different about being able to eat in a setting like this. Now just walking around town, trying to burn some of that food off. Oh, look at this. What restaurant is this? Looks like an entrance to cattle hell or something. <laughs> it's a steak restaurant. Maybe for dinner. Oh, look at this ice cream shop. It's good. Oh, that is super, super creamy. Mmm. Tastes like a Hokkaido milk comb. <laughs> it's delicious. And walking around town, there's these random foot spots that you can just sit at and soak your feet after you get tired. This is such a fun little town. You see so many lines for food. There's a huge line there for, it looks like udon. That shop is selling rice crackers with seaweed. Oh, this is awesome. Wasabi salt for about 250. Heck yes. Again, middle of February, and the cherry blossom's already blooming. Oh, that's random. Yeah. What is this? This is not the... This is a cherry not... blossom demon? No, no, no. He's a good guy. He's a good this demon? Good demon. Protect you from the... Oh, okay. This place is where I'm going to try my hand at making fish cakes. So this is a fish cake factory where they have a lot of information on fish cake, the history, the ingredients, the fish used. They also have a section where they teach you how to make fish cake. I think this is gonna be really fun. So what I learned is that kamaboko, which is the fish cake, it's made from wild white fish. The fish is filleted, the skin and bones are removed, and then the fish meat is washed with pure Hakone mountain water, mountain stream, which then removes the fat and blood from the meat. Then they pound the fish with salt and seasoning, basically turning into a sticky paste. And by adding the salt, the fish coagulates, which is the most important important part of the process. It's then shaped and then you can steam it, fry it. Of course, this whole thing is very delicious and healthy. There's really not a lot of fat in fish cake. For 
ingredients, pack of powder. The powder has three different types of fish. Mm, smells really concentrated, very good. Next, add the water, the whole water in the bag. So you gotta open it up and put a lot of air into the bag. Now, shake it all about. It's very thick now. So they tell you to put six scoops of vegetables in here, any kind you want. So I put some edamame, carrots, and onions. And now you gotta just mix it all together. And then you can make your own shape of the fish cake, shape it any way you want, and put it onto the bamboo leaf. Kinda looks like a fish, hopefully. Oh, here's my fish. Kinda looks more like a fish now. <laughs> oh, it's not really good. So this is Odawara Castle. I love looking at castles here in Japan. It's not a huge castle, but oh my gosh, it's beautiful. This is a ninja town, so you have a lot of exhibits where there you can, well it's closed now, but that's where you can get shurikens. These are the castles of Japan by size. Osaka is number one. And this castle is right here. So this castle was built in the 1400s and it was just renovated five years ago. So inside it just looks like a museum, very new. This is the view on top of the castle. You can see all the mountain in one direction and then the ocean over there. Wow, this whole area is so beautiful at night. This whole street is full of restaurants and shops with very traditional architecture. We already have dinner plans though, so there's so much fun here. Chocolate pudding looks awesome. Oh, strawberry pudding as well. Got this chirashi plate. It's only about $6. There's lean tuna, there's chopped fatty tuna, salmon, tamago, there's shrimp, ikura. Oh, this is so amazing. $6. Unbelievably fresh and delicious. This chocolate pudding looks exquisite. Japan is the best place for pudding. They make the best pudding in the world, I'm telling you. This is the lightest, softest, most delicate, most intricately delicious pudding you'll ever find. This is just some next level pudding. <laughs> it's so good. Also, since it is strawberry season, strawberry pudding. This is so freaking good. If you come to Japan, go to Moro's off and get yourself some pudding. This tastes like fresh strawberries in here. Sweet and tart. It's just as delicate as the chocolate. Tonight's dinner is at Toshima Manryo Ichigaswan, and this is a place that serves freshwater eel. This restaurant was built around 1940, and they've been specializing in anago for decades. And I just got the appetizer. Look at this, it's like a present. I don't think I've ever had an appetizer that was ever gift wrapped before. And there's a little slip on top that tells you what's inside. And then when you take the top layer off, there's a second layer of appetizer. It's yellowtail wrapped with daikon radish with, of course, fresh wasabi on top. This is just a feast for the eyes. It's colorful, it's vibrant. Itadakimasu. And this is a blackfish sperm with peppercorn oil on top. That's about as creamy as you can get. Very delicate. And the peppercorn oil just adds a bit of fragrance to this very mild piece of fish. 
I think there's some uh, sesame in this peppercorn uh, oil as well. That really adds to the fragrance of this dish. Next up, slices of chicken with fiddlehead fur on top. And the green sauce on top is a special homemade egg, kind of a mayo sauce. I mean, this chicken is just all sorts of tender. Paired with a super crunchy veg. I like that a lot. Yellowtail. Yeah, this is my favorite. A little bit of crunchy daikon on the outside. The fish, so clean. With a refreshing crunch of the daikon and a bit of fragrant wasabi bite. The starter dishes so far I've had on this trip has consistently been not just beautiful, but really kind of just whet your appetite for what's to come. So this is a really exciting dining experience. You don't ever see uh, Unagi hot pots. I think this is the first time I've ever encountered one in Japan. And inside there's gluten, white wood year, and the yield is sliced whole, like a chunk of yield, the whole section of it, with some scallions, kuzu starch noodles. Oh, well, that's really interesting. The soup is made with dashi. It's incredibly light. You do get a slight flavor of the yield in the soup, and it just adds that extra depth and umami flavor to the broth. All right, let's try the yield. Mmm. Well, the eel is very fatty. They said this is blue eel, which is one of the fattier varieties. Oh, it is super fatty. Very gelatinousy. Especially the bites with the skin. The flesh is just incredibly delicate. All right, you barely need to chew that. Mmm. Gluten is nice. Soaks up all that delicious broth. Mm. Noodles are very, very springy. Overall, it's a very subtle, very light, but amazingly immaculate dish. Also, zero fishiness whatsoever. I mean, very, very clean eel. I think the only ways I've eaten eel is just barbecue grilled. This is such an interesting way to eat this fish. Mm. That is wonderful. They just brought over a soup. It's very good, very flavorful. Nice hints of uh, ginger. Main dish is here. It's presented so beautifully in this wooden box. Inside, there it is. Grilled unagi. As soon as you open the box, you smell that sweet umami filled aroma. The fish is just glistening sitting on a bed of white rice and the meat, oh my, this is, I'm not using much effort at all and the meat is just falling apart like this. Mm, just like the hot pot, this is one of the most delicate piece of eel I think I've ever had. I mean, it's just melting your mouth. You don't need teeth at all. I mean, you need the teeth to chew the rice. Definitely do not need it for the unagi. Mm. Need some of this, the some of the skin. Mm. That's so fatty. And more of a gelatinous -y texture. The flavor is very delicate. The aroma combined with that rice is fantastically deep with just a tiny hint of sweetness. Not overly sweet. And the more you chew, the more flavor it becomes. Just to add a hint of smokiness. I think Unagi has now become one of my favorite dons in Japan. Mm -hmm.